Andre Corbeil. That's right. This is Petey Williams' definition of definition of make believe muscle. And I need you to subscribe to Andre Corbeil on YouTube. We got the hardcore legend, an icon in this industry, none other than Mick Foley. DDP, better put some damn clothes on or I'll whoop his ass. And that's the bottom line, cause Stone Cold said so. AKA formerly Brodus Clay the Funkasaurus, and you do know that. the matches ladies and gentlemen youtube subscribers one wrestling fans tuning in worldwide yes andre corbiel here your official impact wrestling one wrestling.com video reporter as always here at the home of the legend the icon bill after big ray andre corbiel bill schuyler and we appreciate you supporting the channel now this year's tna bound for glory pay-per-view may not have been the pay-per-view we actually wanted to see on paper with many of the company's top stars missing in action from tna's supposed signature pay-per-view and let's be honest I wasn't that excited when uh, I hit the order button this Saturday ordering the pay-per-view for 50 bucks. But the fact of the matter is, and the truth is, this was a very solid wrestling-based pay-per-view. Yes, I said it, wrestling fans, a wrestling-based pay-per-view with wrestling showcased that actually seemed fresh to this one wrestling.com reporter. Now, we opened up the show with Manic versus Minoru Tanaka and a match that actually saw Mentor versus Student. And this one didn't disappoint the fans either, as we witnessed a rather loud Japanese crowd throughout the night here at Bound for Glory with many, many American-based chants that added to the value of the show, in my opinion. Comment below, I want to hear your opinion, if you took in Bound for Glory 2014 from Tokyo, Japan. And I called this one here with Tanaka going over, and this is what transpired here at the opener of Bound for Glory, as he goes over the student, TJ Perkins, a.k.a. Manic. We then had Ethan Carter versus Ryota Hama in a comical, entertaining match that actually saw EC3 continually try to notion, to motion, and attempt a body slam on the 500 pound Hama to no avail. But ultimately, it was the one percenter finisher and the 1 2 3 win for the young Ethan Carter, keeping his undefeated streak intact here in Tokyo, Japan. We roll into MVP versus Kazma Sakamoto, who you may remember in the WWE with Tensai, but I digress. This was the next match in succession, and man, was MVP ever over amongst the Japanese crowd in Tokyo, Japan here. And this match actually ended up being quite a bit better than I was expecting it to be, as the strong-styled match here uh, saw MVP take the bulk of the offense. It, ul it ultimately ended up in a shining wizard to the side of Sakamoto's head. It was enough for MVP to take the win here, the big win in Tokyo, Japan, going over in front of a crowd, an audience in front of a country. That means a lot to MVP. We then roll on and we had our match of the night. And I'm not kidding fans. The X Division Championship match. And a lot of people assumed this was going to be the match of the night. And it actually was. As this was an exciting match with all men putting their bodies on the line. Especially Loki. Who I had actually predicted to win here. And this was the first moment where I was wrong within my predictions here at OneWrestling.com earlier in the week. Now... Joe Locke low-key in a coquina clutch submission for the win here and retaining his title in, like I said, a phenomenal match. I was a fan of Kaz Hayashi in WCW, and I knew this was going to be a good match, and it was. Now, we roll on. We had Wrestle 1 take center stage here in a very refreshing tag team match that saw Andy Wu, Iho Del Pantera versus Kuroshio came in, and I... Uh, uh, Yasuki Kamada. I think I said that right. Anyway, they show us the type of talent that Wrestle One actually boasts within their roster, and the entering action here was actually very good, and it held my interest through and through. As uh, Kuroshio and Yusaki, uh, they actually get the big win here at Bound for Glory. Like I said, it was a good match, and if this is the type of talent that Wrestle One boasts, the company's going to go somewhere over time. We know that the company's 
basically a little bit past its infancy and still has a long way to grow and go, but with Muda at the helm, I don't doubt the success of Wrestle 1. We then had Team 3D versus Tommy Dreamer in a hardcore tag match that was a filler match. Darn, I wish the Wolves, Davey uh, and Eddie, would have been okay to, to compete in this, and it didn't happen. So this was our filler match. Now, I thought it was out of place. Tommy Dreamer is Bully Ray's best friend. He's a pretty darn good friend of Devon as well. So I didn't see the, the common sense in this. And I was expecting Tommy Dreamer to turn on his tag team partner, the Monster uh, Abyss. But this match wasn't that bad as we got thumbtack spots. And ultimately 3D putting Tommy Dreamer through the table for the win. And how many times has Tommy Dreamer done that spot with Bully Ray and Devon? Now... It was nostalgic enough for me to enjoy the match, and this is a possible final match in TNA for Team 3D, as Bully actually hinted a possible run in New Japan Pro Wrestling, as Bully actually pulled out a Bullet Club shirt at the end of the night, and I digress, we'll get into that come the end of the main event here. Then we had Havoc versus Velvet Sky for the TNA Knockouts Championship, and uh, Havoc not only muscled and out-wrestled Velvet, she just outright outclassed her altogether here as the TNA poster girl went down. And that's all she is, fans. I hate to say it. Uh, she still can't even deliver a proper running lariat after all these years. She's not bad. She's not terrible. But she's not that great. And clearly she was outclassed here by Havoc at Bound for Glory. So... I was more than relieved when Havoc destroyed her and caused her to tap out in a bear hug. And Velvet Sky doesn't become Knockouts Champion. Havoc leaves Japan, still the TNA Knockouts Champion, and she she deserves it. We then roll on with our main event match, and if you like Mist like I do, then uh, you were a kid in a candy store here, as we had Green Mist, Red Mist, and more importantly, Blue Mist from Sonata. Throughout this tag team match that saw Sonata and Storm take on Muda and Tajiri, capping off a surprisingly good pay-per-view wrestling fans, as this match brought that nostalgic flavor that I needed to see, and it needed to be, as the former master and his friend took on his former student, and his former student's new master. And although this wasn't the absolute best match of the night, it absolutely, de absolutely delivered enough to make me feel like my $50 that I spent the night before ordering the pay-per-view was worth it at the end of the day, as Muda and Tajiri get the win here. But they get the beat down following the match, with Team 3D coming out ultimately to make the save. And I'm going to continue on where I was uh, talking about Bully Ray here. Now, Bully thanked the Japanese crowd as well as Devon here, even speaking Japanese uh, throughout here. And after it was all over, what did he do? He took out a Bullet, a bullet Club shirt as Bully began tearing it up and vowed to put every member through tables, leaving a lingering question as we pan out of Signature's TNA, signa, TNA Signature pay-per-view from Tokyo, Japan, Bound for Glory. Now, I don't know what to think of Bully's actions at the pay-per-view. Was this a self-promotion? And if it was, I think it wasn't uh, a very classy move from Mark. Now, if they do ultimately leave TNA and go to New Japan Pro Wrestling, I do think it would be a better fit than if Bully and Devon were to head up north to Stamford, Connecticut and uh, rejoin the WWE. Uh, let's not kid ourselves. The tag team division in New Japan Pro Wrestling is above and beyond the tag team divisions in WWE and TNA for that matter. But... The WWE Tag Team Division, uh, it's not very good right now, let's be honest. So, if they're not going to stay in TNA, Team 3D and uh, Bully Ray and Devon, uh, I think New Japan Pro Wrestling would be a good fit. But there's a time and a place for everything, and for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And Bully Ray, I don't think this was the right time or the right place in Tokyo, Japan for Bound for Glory. Now, my name's Andre Corbeil. You can follow me at Andre underscore Corbeil at One Wrestling Video, OneWrestling.com, One Wrestling right here on Twitter. Follow the Can Am Wrestling Show at Can Am Wrestling, where you can follow Ray and I, and follow Ray at Big Ray Show on Twitter. Follow Bill Schuyler at You Got the Show, and last but not least, Mr. We'll See at the Matches. Yes, <laughs> Bill Apter at After One Wrestling. The OneWrestling.com family reporting pro wrestling for you guys. Balanced in the middle. Honest, passionate wrestling reporters. And why? Because you're knowledgeable, passionate wrestling fans, and we thank you guys for supporting what we do. And you guys, 
are what make us want to do this. Now, we're going to work hard for you. We're not going to steer you wrong, and we never will. Now, my name's Andre Corbiel, One Wrestling.com reporter. And we're all in this for one thing, wrestling. Bound for glory, even though we missed so many of TNA's top, top stars, and I was very, very upset, as well as you most likely were rolling into Sunday's pay-per-view. Get the passing grade here. Wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. Now, wrestling needs to be a balance of storylines and wrestling. I understand that. But sometimes, a pure-based wrestling show is refreshing. And Bound for Glory was refreshing, even though the card looked like turd on paper. Andre Corbiel, looking for your comments below. And I'm very interested to see what you guys have to say pertaining relating to Bound for Glory 2014. Stay tuned this Wednesday for my Andre Corbiel Impact Wrestling Report right here at OneWrestling.com. You know the score, you know the drill. I said it before, we're all in this for one thing, wrestling. Peace. Thanks for supporting the channel, y'all. Andre Corbio. That's right. This is Petey Williams' definition of definition of Maple Leaf Muscle. And I need you to subscribe to Andre Corbio on YouTube. We you got the hardcore legend, an icon in this industry, none other than Mick Foley. DDP, better put some damn clothes on or I'll whoop his ass. And that's the bottom line, cause Stone Cold said so. AKA, formerly Brodus Clay the Funkasaurus, and you do know that. See you at the matches.